Good afternoon. This is Between the Lines Live at SanduskyRegister.com. My name is Matt Westerhold. I'm the executive editor of the Register. My guest today is U.S. Representative Marcy Kaptur, who is running for re-election in the 9th District. And we're going to meet Marcy in just a moment. We're going to meet Representative Kaptur in just a moment. But before we do, I want to mention that Between the Lines is brought to you by Serving Our Seniors. For Erie County residents age 60 and better, if you need help, call Serving Our Seniors at 419-624-1856. Aaron Caldwell's here producing this segment of Between the Lines. Aaron, do you want to say hello? Hello. <clears throat> and I also want to mention that all of our Between the Lines segments are available at our YouTube channel. Uh, just go to subscriptions and you can find everything we've done in the recent weeks, including an interview with uh, U.S. Representative Tim Ryan running for the U.S. Senate here in Sandusky, among other great interviews, terrific interviews. Right, Aaron? Aaron was there for almost every one of them. Uh, with that, we'll meet uh, U.S. Representative Marcy Kaptur. Thank you for being back. Thank you, Matt, very much. It's a pleasure. In Sandusky again and here at the, the Register. It's good to see you. So, uh, seven days, six days left. How are you feeling about the election? Well, I, I'm feeling good. I think that uh, the voting seems to be heavy, even the early voting, so mm -hmm. citizens are taking an interest. Uh, and uh, we're hoping for a great victory come uh, Tuesday, not just for our district, but for the country. For the country. And what will that look like if it's a victory? I hope it uh, will include the election of people who are reasonable, uh, who are capable of working with those in the other party uh, and who have the welfare of the nation at heart, not some private political agenda or some extreme uh, concoction uh, by which they operate, but rather to strengthen our union uh, and to strengthen the communities that they represent, the districts that they represent. And um, what, uh, what have you learned this fall about campaigning in the United States in 2022. How is it different? How is it different than it was even two years ago or four years ago or uh, earlier in your career? Well, in so many ways. But here in Ohio, I think one of the unfortunate features of having a one-party state is that our legislature constantly gerrymanders the district, so they keep moving it around. and. When you are a representative, you are somebody who works on the tarmac. In other words, you're closest to the people. And it takes you a while to learn everything that's needed in those communities. It's very hard to deliver anything over two years. Okay, so if I look at the Veterans Glass City Skyway in Toledo, that took 16 years, about the same amount of time as it actually took to build the World War II Memorial mm -hmm. in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Something major takes time. If you clean up the Black River, in Lorain, Ohio, which we have been working on for a number of years, one of the major areas of concern of the Great Lakes. That is a great victory. And it didn't happen in one year. It's taken well over a decade, and it's going to take a little bit more, even though it's fishable now. But we have a lot of cleanup to do along our entire Great Lakes system and our portion of it along Lake Erie, the shallowest of the Great Lakes. So what they don't seem to get in Columbus, the people who do these lines, is that to be effective, you have to be knowledgeable about the place you represent. And yeah, we can call it this county or that county, but each county is particular. Certain people live there, certain industries are there, certain types of health care exist or do not exist in those communities. And you have to learn that and then figure out a solution to whatever the challenge might be. And um, we had a situation in Ottawa County, a <clears throat> neighboring county here, where they needed sewers. And that took us quite a while, and we had them uh, put in, working with the local government. And then I got a phone call about four years later. They said, Congresswoman, we need your help. All of the fire plugs are shooting off of the main lines. I said, what? Everyone was stymied. What does that mean, shooting off the main lines? They were like shooting off of rockets from the sewers themselves. Okay. I said, I've never heard of anything like that. And sure enough, what happened was the whole set of engineers that had worked on the project did not sample the soil, and the soil actually eroded the metals in the particular 
wow. variety of sewer and fire plug that they that they bought. All those had to be replaced. Wow. Yeah, it, it was an unbelievable. So many things like that happen when you try to work with the local communities. We're learning about what needs to be done, and it's not so simple to fix. Look at all the issues we had out on the islands with fresh water and clean water. Remember mm -hmm. when those crises mm -hmm. happened? Yeah, that was a while. And we yeah. had to install new water lines. We had to build new docks out there. You don't do that just with a snap of the fingers. Mm -hmm. You have to pass legislation. You have to bring the money. You have to work with the local officials who have to get their councils to approve it, you know, locally. So when they start moving these lines around just to have fun, right, uh, they don't really have the good of the people in mind. They now, just, when you say people in Columbus, you're, you're talking about majority party leaders. Right. One party, there's it, one party that's in charge in Columbus. And, it's and veto it would, proof. It would be wrong if it were, doesn't matter which party it is. That's right. Uh, you know, they're, they're drawing maps to benefit the party, not the people. Not the people. And if you look at Ohio, you don't have to believe me, we have 16 seats in Congress. This is a state that voted twice for President Trump and twice for Barack Obama. Think about that. Mm -hmm. So out of 16 seats, that's 50-50. Okay? So you should have eight congressional seats for one party and eight for the other, and let's go home. Okay, we do... And be, have competitive... Competitive uh, seats. Districts. But what did they do? Uh, in the current mix, my party's got four out of 16 mm -hmm. because of the way they drew the mm -hmm. lines. All right? And now we're going to have... Uh, one less seat in Congress. Ohio didn't grow as fast as mm -hmm. the other states, so we'll go down to 15. And the way they drew these lines, maybe we'll have two seats, maybe three seats out of 15. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. That's not fair. Most Americans are very fair. They want a fair election. And that is not what this group down there produced. Well, it's not only unfair, it is against the rule of law. Is it correct to say that? With the the two amendments to the state constitution, which prohibit gerrymandering. I mean, they were supposed to prohibit gerrymandering. Right. What failed there? The legislature. They basically didn't pay attention to it. And they said, well, even though you're running in unconstitutional districts, they changed the state constitution, mm -hmm. right, to say it can be unfair for two years, and then we have to draw them again. So the districts we're running in will only last two years. And the dis your district has changed. Oh. You mentioned Lorraine County. And, and I, I do appreciate what you said, that being a representative is, is a long-term commitment. I mean, you, you, you don't, you, it takes time to, you know, it takes time just to figure out what's needed. Right. And, you know, you start with what's needed, then you start look, looking for what are the solutions this is a long-term commitment to get right. things done. Just to master the physical needs of a region is an enormous undertaking. Um, and I have a background in local government and my own field of study, city and regional planning. So it's easier to grasp that, okay, than most members. Because most members are lawyers. They don't have any experience mm -hmm. in physical planning mm -hmm. and development. All right. Mm -hmm. So you've got that issue. And then... How about those issues that are not physical? How about the issue of autism? How about having to help people who have children in their families, families who are not going to learn at the same rate as other children and having to acquire property, moving water and sewer lines to property, building housing for those with autism over that is intergenerational. I've been involved in that. That is very hard to do. You have to work with local organizations that have to strengthen locally to become not-for-profits, to find the staffing, to engage the families. If you think you do that in two years, you are wrong. Uh, uh, it, takes a, it takes sometimes decades to really see major progress. It absolutely happens, guaranteed. Um, I've seen it in my own, and that's one of the rewards of being in office, that you actually see people being helped as a result of your work. Our Veterans Commons that we built for homeless veterans, um, when that was dedicated, wow, it was a great day, and it's remained a great day because National Church Residences, which is the management company that was decided to be used, has done a phenomenal job. And that took a long time. To get a new veterans clinic here, a really big one that was effective, 
um, in the Toledo area took us about 26 years. Mm -hmm. 26 years. We couldn't get it. Same thing with a new federal courthouse. We're getting a new federal courthouse. Quarter century. So they, because you get bumped in Congress. Bigger places, Atlanta, Denver, you know, Houston, you know, get out of the way, Ohio, get out of the way. And you have to just endure. You have to be persevering. And you have to try as best you can to represent your area. Do, do you think voters understand that? No. And how do you, other than just telling it like it is here, I, I mean, I know I see you in the community and people uh, gravitate towards you and they talk to you about things that you've done to help their families. You, you get that a lot just from my observations, but how do you get that message to more Ohioans? That's a good question. <laughs> um, I guess go on programs like yours. <laughs> yeah, that's and, true. And, and, and have it in the school so the young people understand that, it, I mean, some people come to Congress, this is, it's like sports, right? It's a race, it's a game. There's two teams, who's gonna win, right? And they come with a gamesmanship attitude. Put that one on the shelf. It's not going to produce anything. Anything. It's not a game. It's not a game. It's not a game. And you know, sort of like when you win, that's it. No, no. They just you just got through the game. Now you gotta really do something, right? Or why are you there? Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, the media has become a major problem. When I was first in Congress elected, we had a speaker named Tip O'Neill. Great guy. Great not photogenic, right? Um, wasn't used to being on the media, and he said, I have to turn the lights on in the Congress. And he meant the cameras and, and broad, yeah, broadcast. And I said, oh, Mr. Speaker, that'll really be a great idea, because that the American people will be able to see how we're debating. And he goes, well, and he was about, I don't know, 80 years old then, uh -huh. I don't know. He said, I think America's going to come to regret it. Really? Because now you have people performing. They didn't do that before. They didn't do that. You went down to the floor, you debated, uh, and so forth. Now they game, because they're on TV, right? So it's like a show. And where we do the real work, in the committees, there's no press. There's no press. Unless there's some sensational thing going on where, you know, somebody shooting off their mouth about something to try to get the press. I can't imagine who that might be. <laughs> well, we have a whole set of those on both sides of the aisle. And they, are very, they have a lot of communications people they hire on their staff mm -hmm. to make sure they get in the news all the time. And this is something, I'm just telling you the truth because it's unbelievable to me what goes on. We recently had a member from one side of the aisle, a very extreme member, say to someone on the other side of the aisle, who is also an extremist in both parties, right? If you say bad things about me, I'll say bad things about you. And we'll both make a lot more money for our campaigns. Uh, Can you country. believe that? Can you be uh, I do believe yeah. it. So that I'm just reporting to the American people, is this where we are? Uh, is you know, this where we are? It's grow up. Grow well, up. Well, that so let's talk about your opponent. Um, you've refused to debate him. Uh, tell, until? Uh, until, yeah. You, you haven't refused. You say you will if he shows the residents of Ohio, of the 9th District, that what did you want him to show? All right. I want him to show the FBI statement that he's been cleared of all criminal wrongdoing from his participation in the riot that occurred on January 6, 2021 at the Capitol, where I was caught inside and he was outside, all right? Now he claims that, oh, he was cleared by the FBI. Says who? Says who? They're still investigating all of that. So I said- So you I, take this personally. Oh, yes. You were inside. Oh, yes. And I know what happened to many of my colleagues. We had 144 officers wounded. Several of our officers died also. Um, some self-inflicted, some as a result of injuries. We had many personnel, including our sergeant and arms staffs, that have quit. They almost, uh, a few of them have almost like a PTS condition. I can see it on them. Uh, they had never seen anything like that in decades of service to the capital of the United States. And, and so when, when someone uh, says that it's time to move on, 
it's time to set the January 6th committee aside. It's time to uh, let it go. Uh, you know, is it time to let it go? Or? It's time to prosecute. It's time to prosecute. And that has finally begun. Justice meets out slowly. I'm not an attorney by training, and I get frustrated with some of the you know, hearings and all of this, but those investigations will continue to go on, and they need to go on, because we need to understand who on that plaza and inside the building exactly what they were doing. I know that they're going over every tape. They're looking, they're identifying people. We know a lot more than we knew a year ago, and we need to pursue prosecution of these individuals. What they did was completely illegal and destabilizing. It looked like the United States was a banana republic, for heaven's sake. And they did great damage inside that building. Inside. Uh, you mean physical damage? Physical. What about institutional damage? I mean, oh. how you know should Americans be fearful that this will happen again? Well, I'll tell you, there were people there who were hell bent on political violence, and they succeeded mm -hmm. in stopping for a while the counting of votes to elect the president of the United States. That was premeditated. It was damaging, and it caused the death and injury of so many. Okay, um, they put at risk the lives of members of Congress. For instance, there was one gentleman sitting next to me, I won't say who, <clears throat> uh, during the early morning hours as we were waiting for the official ceremony to begin and some of the proceedings were happening on the floor. We were sitting in the gallery above, right? And this person was elderly and had had very serious health problems and was recovering. And about, I don't remember exactly the hour, maybe it was, 1115, I'm not sure, said, Marcy, this is really getting boring. I'm going back to my office. And all I can say is, thank God he did. Thank God. He's such a good member and such an intelligent member. <clears throat> and he doesn't have to run, right? He's had some illness in his life, but he loves our country so much, and he is so smart. He is so smart, and his participation matters to the country. Uh, he's from the working class like I am and there aren't enough of us in the Congress, so he fights for the people every day that he's there. If he had stayed, he couldn't have made it out <clears throat> because he'd had an operation that limited his ability to fully function uh, and do what we had to do to get out of there. And um, I thought, boy, God was with him. Whoa. Um, we've had others who were in that and they couldn't take, um, it's like they have PTSD because of what happened inside. Do you have PTSD? No. Good for you. No, no, I have PTSD, but that's why well, I want the people who did this to go to jail. Did it? Did, it, did January six strengthen your resolve? It sure did. How, tell me about that. How 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 did it? Well, I was sitting there. We didn't understand what was going on. You could hear all of the noise and the shouting, and the, it sounded like a zoo. Actually, you could hear all these echoes coming up through the stairwells and all, and then the pounding. I'll never forget the pounding on the, the doors would heave, and I thought, what the, is going on here? And uh, then they said, you know, tear gas in the, in the uh, dome, uh, put on your tear gas mask. Well, I never had a tear gas mask on in my life. And I didn't even know how to get it out of the box that it was in, nor did most people. And I thought, well, who's shooting off tear? Why are they shooting off tear? What, what is going on? And they had cleared the floor at that point <clears throat> and taken the speaker off and um, the uh, vice president. and. Um, it was just so bizarre, and I didn't have my iPhone with me. I had plugged it in. I didn't have access to it at that point, so I couldn't be in touch with anybody, uh, my own staff, for example. So you could hear all of this noise, and it got louder and louder and louder. And when we were finally evacuated, and we had to go through a certain door, they weren't sure who was on the other side, so they were afraid to open the door. Once they did, we could see some of the individuals who had come up the stairwells were flat on their belly, spread eagle, and the sergeant at arms where they were pointing at their heads with guns. And so I thought, oh, you know, this is what we were elected for. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, then as what happened became more clear later, you know, it was, um, it was terrible. 
and now that I see the films and people up in trees with guns and when I went back to my own office later in the evening and the staff opened the door, they were all holed up inside. I said, it's me, you know, open the door. And uh, they said, Marcy, we saw them on the lawn. And they were all lined up in units. And they were, you know, they were scaling. I said, well, did you take pictures? Guess what? They didn't. Uh. My own staff. I thought, what? Uh, so there's a lot of information that has to be collected. And I want to know every one of those individuals. And I know, want to know what motivated them. We know the Oath Keepers. They found them. We know that uh, they're going down their chain of command. Um, they operate on social media. And they have certain goals uh, for the destruction of our normal civil engagement as a society, the way that we elect people and we swear them in and we uh, then conduct the business of the nation. We are a representative democracy. We are not a direct democracy. You just can't have hordes of people coming and storming the Capitol. And you've probably seen on international news now where in some other places people are storming their governments, which are a lot weaker than ours. And I thought, what kind of example did that set for the world? Do you think um, former President Trump will be indicted or prosecuted for his role in what happened on January 6th? Well, or should he be? If the evidence leads to his involvement, he should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law, yes. We still don't, I still don't know, I'm only one member, right, what he did inside that White House that day. They're piecing it together. And for those of us who were stuck in that building and are now seeing how our Capitol Police were so, out, so outnumbered, where were the reinforcements? And the question I have in my mind, which I really I think deserves a lot of investigation, I'm sure they are. The FBI had notified the Capitol Police that this kind of activity uh, was possible. This kind of extreme um, violence was possible. The Capitol Police weren't ready. They weren't armed. They weren't... What happened between the FBI, which is an executive branch, and the legislative branch? Where was the breakdown? Where was the breakdown? I keep reading this in the paper. I'm going, well, hey, wait a minute. What happened here? Who knows that? I don't know, but I want to know. So I want them to keep investigating so we can understand so it never happens again, ever. Well, uh, your opponent would, uh, he, he was there uh, on January 6th, and he breached the Capitol, I believe, or it's been reported that he breached the Capitol. It's unclear uh, exactly what his activities were, but exactly. as, as you said, he claims to have been cleared by the FBI, and if that's true, there should be a way to confirm that if it's Correct. true. Uh, but what if he's elected? What if other people who are election deniers are elected? What if other people who, who uh, downplay the importance of January 6th are elected? Uh, what happens then? I mean, is, what happens then? Well, I believe this is a real threat to our republic. I believe that individuals who try to take the law into their own hands uh, are harming our country greatly, no matter what their motivation. There's a normal process that one goes through, right? You have to be certified, you have to go before the public, you have to seek their vote. And uh, my opponent says that he is for the secession of Ohio from the Union. One of the reasons he's running is to secede from the Union. I am running for being a member of Congress for the United States of America, not the divided States of America. I find his desire to secede uh, from the Union, to put Ohio into something, I don't know what, okay, um, as bizarre and not worthy of those who have come from the free state of Ohio, okay? I don't know whether he wants to take us back to the Confederacy, is that what he's talking about? Um, we already did that, you know, 
over a century ago. Mm -hmm. Let's put that door, let's shut that door, let's move forward, not backward. Um, but I find some of these preposterous um, statements um, not worthy of anyone seeking the office. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he also has um, been called out for exaggerating his military career. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, um, I know what I have read from an AP story, mm -hmm. okay, um, that uh, basically uh, states that he did not do what he claims to have done, being an Afghan, uh, a combat veteran in Afghanistan. And, and did you or your campaign have anything to do with the AP uh, getting that story? No. No. And it's, it, you've been accused of that, uh, but I, I mean, wish we had actually. But <laughs> uh, but uh, when you run for office, everything in your life is public, and the um, press goes through everything. Your where you live, where you went to school, where your work, where your family worked. I mean everything, and so it it becomes public. I still think we don't know a lot about this uh, individual. Yeah, and I, I should say that that um, there has not been any credible reporting refuting the Associated Press's reporting about J.R. Majewski's exaggerating his military experience, uh, effectively uh, stating to the public that he is a combat veteran when in fact he never stepped foot in Afghanistan. or something to that effect. Um, there's never been any reporting that refutes the Associated Press reporting. So I've had letter writers um, say that all of that's been refuted and I, I've asked the letter writers to cite those uh, press reports that refute it and I have yet to, to either see something credible or be provided something credible. I think I can provide you with one form because I did see printed um, part of the discharge papers, mm -hmm. and it said on the bottom, "Do not re," something like "Do not reenlist," or the the uh, Air Force would not allow him to reenlist. Right. Now, why would they do that? I've never seen that. I have no idea how many individuals a year in the Air Force have that put at the bottom. And of that room. is also very unusual. Been unrefuted, even by the candidate himself. Uh, it's unrefuted in interviews. He has not been available to talk to the press, certainly. Uh, uh, you know Tom Jackson, reporter Tom Jackson, has probably reached out to him at least 50 times since he was uh, nominated in May by the Republican Party, to no avail. Um, so where are you going to be election night? Uh, well, we will probably be going to the different counties and thanking all the people that have worked so hard to help us. And I want to thank them. I want to thank everyone in Erie County. Uh, the people here could not have been kinder. Uh, in Ottawa County, um, uh, in Sandusky County, which is new to us. And uh, so we're going to go try to do like a little caravan around the district, all the way to the Indiana line. Wow. Because you now represent west of Lucas County. Yes. How, how has that been for you? Also, you should stop by here and we'll do it between the lines. Oh, okay. All okay. Right. All right. Uh, on election night. And that's a week from, it's less than a week. From it's today. a week from yesterday. Yes. So we can set that up. <laughs> uh, Kyle, we can set that up <laughs> at any time of the day that you're available, that you're in Erie County. And we would love to see you on election day. Um, what else? What else do you want voters to know, residents to know, uh, if they if they haven't voted, or even if they have voted? Well, first of all, I want to thank them for voting, and I want to encourage them to have their friends vote as well. Nothing could be more important in a free society than citizens making decisions about who represents them. I would very much appreciate their vote. I would like to continue serving our area. I think. Any place that I've ever represented, you will see an improvement uh, in those regions, and uh, especially with the progress we're making now in reshoring U.S. manufacturing. So whether it's in the automotive industry, where we see General Motors now reinvesting in our region and Ford Motor, 
major investments. These are these are billion dollar investments. This is something yeah, unbelievable. This is why I ran for office yeah. originally in order to see my area reinvested. And now and we've birthed a whole new industry in the solar industry. We are seeing the steel industry come back with a wallop uh, across our uh, area with Intel uh, investing in Ohio, and they were waiting for the Chips Act, which I voted for to be passed in order to help that uh, to reshore some of what we've lost. One of the reasons we have inflation is because so much of what we consume comes from China mm -hmm. and the Pacific. And you, all you have to do is travel to California and look at those docks and understand what's going on. We need to make and build what makes and builds America right here at home. And we're beginning to see that happening. So In Ohio. Hey, in northern Ohio, mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. And Intel will be down in Licking County. You, okay. you, you, you love all of Ohio, but especially, especially northern Ohio. Especially the Great Lakes. Mm -hmm. Especially the Great Lakes and the Great Lakes watershed. It is the most important place in the world. I said it from the day I was elected, and we have to be stewards of this for the future. It is going to be needed. The Arctic is melting. Our relationship to Hudson Bay and the Canadians in this whole region is only going to become more important. What do we see in our country? West of the Mississippi, lots of droughts. Even the Mississippi River is diminishing. When you look at what's happening to the Mississippi River, mm -hmm. for the first time in American history out west, the Colorado River being diverted, and all of our aquifers whether and, and lakes like Powell, Lake Mead, what's going on out west, there's going to be a shift it's happening and we have to be prepared for it and we have to make sure that we're stewards of our Great Lakes and Lake Erie and Lake Ontario are very, very, very threatened right now. So we're trying to work with our agricultural community, with our mayors and our wastewater uh, treatment plants and we have a big job to do here. And it's much more than a two year commitment. Oh, I'm, to, to retool what we, the way we live and handle water and wastewater in this area, it's going to take us 25 years. But we got to have leadership in order to get us there. And I don't hear too many other people other than my Republican counterpart over in Ashtabula, David Joyce and I co-chair the Great Lakes Task Force. There's a lot of people not focused on this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Sandusky, people are focused on it because they mm -hmm. live right on the water. Mm -hmm. They understand. But for the broad number of people, they don't. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you so much for, for being here on Between the Lines today. I have personally endorsed U.S. Representative Marcy Kaptur for re-election. I will be voting for you. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate you in so many ways. I see you so often in Erie County. Um, our elected people here in Erie County respect you. Uh, they look to you for your leadership. Uh, I've seen that for uh, years now. Uh, and so I want to thank you uh, for running again, and I wish you the best of luck in the election. Thank you for having this program. Thank you for having the register. Thank you for reporting what happens in this area that is essential to liberty. Journalism at the local level is essential to liberty in this country. And I, I thank you for that, and you, you are correct, and you've always been supportive of journalism, and I, I do appreciate that as well. So thank you so much. It's good to see you again, and, and we will see you a week from yesterday, Tuesday. <laughs> thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you, man. Thank That's you it much. for this segment of Between the Lines at SandusskyRegister.com. Remember, all of our Between the Lines are available for demand viewing at our YouTube channel and at SandusskyRegister.com.